Good evening, everybody. Welcome to tonight's meeting of the Escondido City Council. Please rise with us for a moment of reflection and remain standing for the flag salute. Yes, please join me in a moment of reflection. I would come together tonight to say thank you. Thank you for the privilege, the blessing, the honor it is to serve here in the city of Escondido. We come together tonight as a diverse community, a community from backgrounds, different beliefs, different presence, and different futures, yet one common goal that is the betterment of this city. We come together tonight to seek guidance, wisdom, and discernment during deliberations that transpire this evening. In doing so, we lift up Councilmember Morosco, Councilmember Garcia, Councilmember Martinez, Deputy Mayor Garcia, and Mayor White. May they be granted peace and wisdom as they lead our city into a bright and prosperous future. Amen. All right, we'll call this meeting to order and do a quick roll call. Council Member Martinez? Present. Council Member Morosco? Present. Council Member Garcia? Present. Deputy Mayor Garcia? Here. I, Dane White, am here. There is no report out of closed session tonight. And before we move on to public comments, I would, I would like to invite the Miss Escondido princesses up to the front, please, to join me for some certificates of recognition. and service in the community uh, and and thank you Michelle for everything you've done for this program but um, I feel like every event I go to and I go to a lot of events every event I go to there they're representing the city of Escondido uh, and we should all be proud of that and I thank you all for that um, I didn't tell you this beforehand but would one of you be willing just to speak for a minute and talk about what the pageant meant to you and some of the things that you did and experienced in the community <laughs> Push your <laughs> um, Well, the pageant was overall a great opportunity, not only, not only to meet new people within the community, but I mean, from other cities as well. It was, I mean, seriously, we all met so many new people, including the mayor, which was really cool. Um, and we got to do a lot of volunteer work as well as like, um, you know, stuff in the community. <laughs> I don't know, but it was it was a really fun experience, and it was I enjoyed volunteering, as I think everybody else enjoyed it too. So, lots of new experiences and opportunities and whatnot. Very good. Awesome. Thank you. Well, thank you all. Uh, I'm proud to present certificates of recognition to all of you. We'll start with Jocelyn Gutierrez, Sienna Dupont, Scarlett Dupont. Is that Junior? Okay. Addison Schuster. Again, thank you all. Oh, sweet. Come on up. You can join them right over there. Unless you want to speak, you can. Oh, down there on the floor. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Thank Congratulations you. to you all. Would you all join me in the center over here for a picture? And I'll invite the city council member down, members down as well.
All right, thank you everybody for that. We'll move on to the consent calendar. Items one through 11 are on consent tonight. Items on consent are approved in a single motion. And I will go ahead and move to approve items Mr. one Mayor, through. Sorry to interrupt. I think we need oral communication. Before. Oh yeah, well I guess so. We can do public comments. No problem. First we have Ruth Weiss. Thank you and good afternoon. My name is Ruth Weiss and I live in San Diego County. I've been a resident of Spring Valley in South County for 66 years. Tonight I speak as a volunteer, not a spokesperson for United Sovereign Americans. United Sovereign Americans is a nationwide organization with thousands of active volunteers in over 20 states. Today we, my colleagues and I, come to you as, a concern, as concerned citizens sharing some alarming information about our state's voter database uncovered through thousands of hours of research conducted by highly qualified and credentialed data team. While the numbers are staggering and somewhat difficult to comprehend, one thing is clear, they don't add up. Our audit of the 2022 election using only official data provided by state election officials shows that the 2022 election may not have been accurate or legally compliant. We are not alleging that one candidate won over another and certainly not that any election should be overturned. The state's official data from a certified election shows that the votes as counted were not all valid and accurate under the law. Tonight, my colleagues and I will present you with a resolution demanding an end to the inaccuracy and uncertainty plaguing our elections, along with a summary of our findings and the laws that apply. We're very happy to meet with you to go over this information, including more detail about the specific findings. If you have any questions that we cannot answer tonight, I will, we will commit to getting back to you with the answers in writing from the United Sovereign Americans executive team as soon as possible. This data and our request for an investigation have been shared with state elections officials and law enforcement. It is essential that you as our representatives make it clear that these must be taken seriously. So this evening we come to you who are our closest elected representatives for support and action. We are asking that you listen to the resolution and ask questions if you have them and then vote promptly for its passage. Your action on this resolution will illustrate your dedication and support to the concerns of your constituents and your county. Thank you. Our next three speakers will read the resolution in three parts, and our final speaker will conclude the presentation. Thank you. Our next speaker is Anna Machinsky. Hello, my name is Ann Machinsky and I live in San Diego County. Resolution for a legally valid 2024 general election. Whereas it is recognized civil right in the United States for every citizen to have free and fair elections, quote, and the right of suffrage can be denied by a debasement or dilution of the weight of a citizen's vote, just as effectively as by wholly prohibiting the free exercise of the franchise, end quote. U.S. Supreme Court, Reynolds v. Sims, 1964. Whereas, it is the duty of our election officials to guarantee our elections are accurate and free from distortion or manipulation. Quote, Congress seeks to guard the election of members of Congress against any possible unfairness by compelling everyone concerned in holding the election to a strict and scrupulous observance of every duty devolved upon him while so engaged. The evil intent consists in disobedience to the law end quote, U.S. Supreme Court in Recoy, 1888. Whereas, our constitutional system of re representative government only works when the following four tenets of an election are upheld. One, the voter rolls must be accurate, National Voter Registration Act 1993. Two, votes must be counted, excuse me, votes counted must be from eligible voters, U.S. Constitution, 14th Amendment, Section 2. Three, the number of votes counted must equal the number of voters who voted. Four, there can be no more than one in 125,000 ballots in error by the voting system, Help America Vote Act 2002. 
Whereas open source audit of the California 2022 general election conducted in California citizens has uncovered evidence of massive inaccuracies, inaccuracies that appear to violate both federal and state laws, including 5,886,198 ineligible or uncertain registration violations found within the California State Voter Roll Database. 2,776,934 votes cast by ineligible or unregist uncertain registrations. 123,785 more votes counted than voters who voted. No one knows who cast them. 2,776,849 apparent voting violations in excess of the legal standard of system accuracy for a valid federal election. The maximum allowable system error for the 2022 general election in California was 90. Our next speaker is Susan Kennedy. My name is Susan Kennedy. I'm a resident of San Diego County. Again, California had approximately 2.8 million apparent voting violations. Certification as defined by law and attestation of accuracy and compliance appears to have been fraudulent and illegal. Whereas these findings trample legal accuracy requirements of the voting system during a federal election, Accuracy is defined as the ability of the system to capture and report the specific selections and absence of selections made by a voter without error, whereas the intent of the voters must be known factually before certification can be lawfully conducted. Certification of an election that varies from the law is an abridgment of the civil rights of the citizens, a fraud ab initio, U.S. versus Throckmorton, 1878. Quote, from time immemorial, an election to public office has been, in point of substance, no more and no less than the expression by qualified electors of their choice of candidates, end quote, U.S. Supreme Court, United States versus Classic, 1941. Whereas the 2022 general election appears to have been invalid, depriving us of the guaranteed protection of our natural rights under a government duly and provably chosen by us, the American people, resulting in incalculable damage to our families, our way of life, and the fabric of these United States. Therefore, we call upon our representatives to provide relief to the people and the assurance of domestic tranquility by joining us in demanding a valid 2024 general election that upholds these existing laws and equitable principles of law. One, proof of citizenship, identity, and eligibility required to register and vote, not anonymous attestation. Two, voter rolls certified accurate and available for public review and challenge 30 days before the start of early voting. Voters added after that date must be bring proof of citizenship, identity, and address in person to a qualified official at each polling place. Three, hand-marked secure ballots similar to currency, where imaging technology is used for tabulation, the security features must be verifiable in the ballot image. Four, systems, machines, security measures, infrastructure, and conduct are required to be compliant with federal law for fraud prevention regarding risk assessment, certification, testing, and implementation. Thank you. Our next speaker is Jackie Zolik. Good evening, my name's Jackie Zolik. I live in San Diego County. Number five, adjudication must be signed off by party, candidate, and trained citizen witness after being given full and effective observation rights. Candidates and trained citizens must be allowed immediate access to ballots, ballot images, and cast vote records or CVRs. Number six, ballots regardless of entry source, election operations, and systems must maintain end-to-end -end chain of custody from voter to vote count 
to final canvas, including auditability and witness transfer with paper records. Number seven, a National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, compliant, randomized, statistically valid, end-to-end -end audit with a 95% confidence level of all elections pursuant to the 14th Amendment, Section 2 must be performed. These audits are to be conducted by qualified, insured, and bonded security, forensics, or financial auditors, not personnel from within the election system. Reconciliation will include the vote count, real physical ballots and adjudication, cast voting records, ballot count, qualified voter count, custody transfer, and all other paper and electronic election systems, including logs. Number eight, if the total of unique variances above is more than 10% of the margin of victory, a new election must be held in the state for those candidates affected, unless the issues can be provably corrected by a manual hand recount and full review of records. Number nine, waiver of requirements is not allowed. Only end-to-end -end system compliance from registration through certification can guarantee the intent of the people is accurately recorded. Be it resolved that the Escondido City Council members stand in support with the concerns and remedies presented here. We implore the San Diego Board of Supervisors, California Legislature, federal legislators, law enforcement, federal and state judges, and both California Secretary of State and County Registrars of Voters to cooperate and fulfill these firm requests of the people. Thank you. Our final speaker is Skip Heyman. Good evening, my name is Skip Heyman. Uh, uh, resident of San Diego County and I've lived in Carlsbad for over 40 years and good evening mayor and council members. Um, I'm also a volunteer and not an official spokesperson with United Sovereign Americans. What you heard tonight is the culmination of thousands of hours of work by our highly qualified and credentialed volunteer data teams. Data teams from California and across the country. It's a powerfully written resolution outlast, outlining massive inaccuracies in our 2022 election from registration through certification. In it, you heard us ask for meaningful remedies that will proactively protect the validity of the 2024 general election for all Americans. In fact, the resolution cited many U.S. Supreme Court precedents that support the need for such actions. Laws are being ignored. How much is it costing us not to fix the problem? How much is the cost in our GDP, our military, our foreign policy, our health, the self-esteem of our children and young people, and how much is it costing our dignity to keep fighting each other. The cost is immeasurable. So we urge you to agree by putting the resolution on an agenda for the next council, city council meeting and voting in support of fair, honest, valid elections. Our website showcases our initiatives nationwide and has some extremely informative videos revealing the anomalies and apparent violations of law in California. The website is uniteforfreedom.com. That's unite, the number four, freedom.com. And I encourage you to check it out and learn more about our organization. One more time, that's unite, the number four, freedom.com. And we thank you for your time tonight. No further public on this item. Thank you. Will someone be leaving your in contact information with um, our city clerk, please? Thank you. I'd be glad to. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Now we will move on to the consent calendar. Oh, go ahead. Uh, and just for the record, my name is Joe Garcia, not Joe Garcia Shu. So if that can be corrected, please. All right. Now we'll move on to the consent calendar. Again, items 1 through 11 are on consent. I'll go ahead and move to approve the consent calendar as is. And prior to opening the voting, just want it reflected, uh, the item number 11 is a no vote for council. Thank members. you, yes. Voting is open. Understood. Motion approved, 5-0.
All right, we'll move on to our public hearing portions of the meeting. Uh, item 12 is to adopt the adoption of changes to the user and regula regulatory fee schedule. And we'll open the public hearing and turn the time over to uh, Director Holmes. Good evening. Thank you, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, and City Council members. My name is Christina Holmes, Director of Finance for the City. And this public hearing is for the adoption of changes to the user and regulatory fee schedule. So on June 5th, a user and regulatory fee study workshop was held. City Council was provided the results of a user fee study that was prepared by Clear Source Financial Consulting. Based on feedback from the Council on June 5th, two additional fee schedules were brought back to the City Council on June 19th. At that meeting, City Council directed staff to return with a fee schedule that is full cost recovery for all direct benefit fees and to adjust recreation program fees to the top of the market or full cost recovery. In addition, for those recreation programs, if there were no comparable agencies, then the fee was increased by 10% 10, 10 to step closer to full cost recovery and additional facility rentals were moved to full cost recovery. For year two adjustments for the recreation fees, staff will return to City Council this fiscal year to review the fees further and request direction for year two fee adjustments. With the adoption of the proposed changes to the fee schedule, the anticipated fiscal impact of the proposed fee changes is an increase of approximately $2.6 million in year one, um, assuming no changes in demand for these services. In year two, fees will be adjusted based on the change in consumer price index measured in San Diego County. That concludes staff's presentation. So again, we are requesting that City Council adopt resolution number 2024-72, approving adjustments to the city's user and regulatory fee schedule and authorizing those annual inflationary adjustments to fees in between comprehensive studies. Um, with approval this evening, the new fees will be effective September 15th. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have any public comments? None. Okay. We'll close the hearing and I'll open it up for discussion if there is any or entertain a motion. I'll move to approve the recommendation. Motion. I'll second it. Go ahead. So my question uh, over here, we're in, um, let's see, page uh, 424, uh, ticket sign off. There's a number of areas, I mean, not just this one, but that are in red and strict, stricken off. What is the, and then it just says see above, what does that mean? I believe the page you're referring to is probably for our police department, and those are um, uh, violations, ticket violations. So the red lines that you're seeing is really a cleanup of the schedule. They were condensed into one line item, referring to other regulatory um, agencies that, that control those violation dollars. So they, yeah. it's not that they're no longer considered violations. Correct. It's not that they're no longer considered violations. I believe at the beginning or the end of that page, there is just the one line item of all code, all violations are this fee. Okay, yeah. Beautiful. So that, that is fee cleanup. All right. Thank you. Voting is open. Perfect. Motion approved, 4-1, Martinez, no. Okay, on to current business. Thank you, by the way. On to current business, uh, item 13 is the consideration of resolution and ordinance placing the Escondido Community Investment Measure before voters at the, at the municipal election in November 5th, 2024. And I'll turn the time over to Mr. Beck. Honorable Mayor, members of the City Council, Zach Beck, City Clerk, here to present the Escondido Com Community Investment Measure. Uh, to give you some background, I just want to go over the following items. We're going to discuss the Citizens Initiative, the San Diego County Registrar of Voters, and the potential next steps for the City Council. Starting with the Citizens Initiative, back on January 9th, 2024, proponents filed a notice of intention to circulate a petition in the City of Escondido to establish a one-cent general transaction and use sales tax increase for 20 years pursuant to California Elections Code Section 9202. On January 17th, the city attorney drafted a ballot title and summary pursuant to California Elections Code 9203, and, provide, and the city clerk provided the ballot title and summary to the proponents. On January 25th, the proponents for the SMU Community Investment Initiative published the notice of intention to circulate a petition and the ballot title and summary in the SMU Times Advocate, and this allowed them to commence circulation of the petitions. 
Then, on May 31, 2024, proponents filed the petitions with the City Clerk's Office. Pursuant to California Elections Code Section 9210, I conducted a prima facie count, and during the prima facie count, I did identify that the proponents took extensive work to cross out duplicates and problematic signatures on the petitions. Then, after that, on June 3, 2024, I provided these petitions to the San Diego County Registrar of Voters, pursuant to California Elections Code 9115A. The ROV found that the SNU Community Investment Initiative achieved approximately a 74% signature validation rate via the 3% random sample count. Then on June 18, 2024, the ROV informed the city clerk that there were two duplicates found in the 3% random sample. Per California Administrative Code, Section 20531, duplicates are assigned a weighted average, and this caused the validation rate to fall from 74% to 64.9%. It's worth noting that duplicates are not weighted as part of a full count. California Secretary of State provides voter registration updates, and per the voter registration report that was on file prior to the notice of intention being submitted to the City Clerk's Office on January 9th, the number of signatures required to qualify for a measure in Escondido was 7,748 signatures. California Elections Code Section 9115B says, if the statistical sampling shows that the number of valid signatures is within 95 to 110% of the number of signatures of qualified voters needed to declare the petition sufficient, the elections official shall, within 90 days from the date of the filing of the petition, excluding Saturdays, Sundays, and holidays, examine and verify the signatures filed. On June 19, 2024, I requested the RV proceed with conducting a full count of all signatures submitted for the Escondido Community Investment Initiative. On June 20th, 2024, the RV notified myself that the official deadline for them to complete their count is October 8th, 2024. California Elections Code Section 10403A states that the election needs to be submitted 88 days prior to the date of the election. And that leaves us with the following. The ballot deadline is August 9th, 2024. However, the ROV deadline to finish their count is October 8th, 2024. So there are key considerations for the council at this moment. The deadline is approaching on August 9th. The SNO Community Investment Initiative achieved approximately a 74% validation rate, which means that it is likely to qualify for the ballot. However, that would likely occur in 2026. On July 10th, 2024, that was the date that we had already scheduled to have this item come before the City Council to administratively advance the SNO Community Investment Initiative onto the November 5th, 2024 ballot. So the next steps for City Council to consider are the following. Due to the time constraints with the ROV being able to meet the August 9th deadline, as well as the expectation that the Escondido Community Investment Initiative would likely qualify for the ballot once the full signature count is complete, staff recommends the City Council take the following proactive steps to place the Escondido Community Investment Measure on the November 5th, 2024 general election ballot. It is worth noting that the ordinance, resolution, and ballot question are the exact same as they would have been for the SNEO Community Investment Initiative. In doing so, the Council would introduce Ordinance Number 2024-08, amending the SNEO Municipal Code to add Chapter 25, Article 2, Division 2, Sections 25-33.1 through 25-33.1. 33.14, establishing a one cent general transaction and use tax for 20 years to be administered by the California Department of Tax and Fee Administration, including provisions for citizen oversight and accountability, as well as adopt resolution number 2024-89, calling for and giving notice of a consolidated general election to be held on November 5th, 2024, and ordering submission of a measure at said election for voters to consider approval of ordinance number 2024-08. It is worth noting the City Council must approve both the ordinance and the resolution with a two-thirds majority, which requires four affirmative votes. The ballot question that was prepared by the City Attorney for the Escondido Community Investment Measure reads as follows, quote, to provide funding for essential services in Escondido, such as providing public safety, addressing homelessness, improving streets, sidewalks and infrastructure, increasing police, fire and paramedic services, reducing traffic congestion, and maintaining parks, trails, and open space. Shall the Escondido Community Investment Measure, establishing a local one-cent sales tax providing approximately $28 million annually for 20 years, be adopted for general government use with independent audits, citizen oversight, and all money staying in Escondido? The recommendation from staff is as follows. Adopt resolution number 2024-89, calling for an election submitting a proposed one-cent general transactions and use tax increase to the voters. 
and introduce ordinance number 2024-08, amending the SMU Municipal Code to establish a one-cent sales tax for 20 years to be administered by the California Department of Tax and Fee Administration, including provisions for citizen oversight and accountability. I'm here for any questions that the council may have. Thank you. Do we have any public comments on the item? None. Okay, uh, I just have some brief comments. Uh, thank you for the staff report. I believe that uh, the report is clearly outlined with some measure of confidence that the measure is on track to qualify for the ballot. And I personally believe that the decision before us today uh, is more a matter of proactivity. I view this as a procedural vote uh, to ensure that the voters can make this decision this November instead of waiting uh, for the ROV to finish its process. And uh, I would also say this, we are the policy makers and I'm not viewing this as a policy decision. Uh, this is simply a matter of making sure the citizens initiative as drafted uh, is able to make it onto the November ballot before the, the full count is concluded. And uh, I believe that making offering any amendments to the way that the staff report is presented would be inappropriate. And with that, I will move to approve the recommendation as is and ask for a second. Okay, I'll open it up to my colleagues for any comments or questions. Thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I um, understand the, the dire need for, for a sales tax measure. Um, my preference, as in the past, would have been that, you know, this be a council initiative, but it's, um, it, you know, what's before us is what the citizens have put together, and I just wanted to say that, you know, I would have, things that I would have done differently, and I, I think it's important to voice that, um, is change the, the way the... Um, advisory board is made up and also um, concerns that I've heard about the signature collection process. So I just wanted to lift up those were concerns and I feel like we could have done better. However, um, I agree that, you know, it doesn't make sense to change um, what the citizens drafted, even though I would have preferred something different and I, I would not want to hold my city hostage in a desperate time of need. So um, I will be supporting this evening. Um, just curious as to what, is it the makeup of the oversight committee that's bothersome? What, what, what would you be your recommendation? To? Yeah, it, that it'd be citizen. I, I, I'm okay with the Taxpayers Association being on there, but I feel because the money will be used for the city that it's not appropriate for the uh, police and fire to have representatives on there. I feel like that's a conflict of interest. Got it. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, I, I feel the exact opposite. I think that they should be there absolutely positively. No, no ifs, ands, or buts. My, my opinion. Um, and you also mentioned the San Diego Taxpayers Association. Rarely do they ever support or endorse such initiatives or measures. This is huge. Uh, the citizens work diligently to obtain this. They need to re uh, respect those efforts as well as uh, the endorsement that we received from the San Diego, that they have received and obtained from the San Diego Taxpayers Association. So no modification of language at all um, is what my recommendation is. Um, it, time is of the essence and I agree with the mayor that this is proactive, it's procedural, and it's extremely supportive of our citizens. And Mike, just for clarification, I, I would be, in, I was in favor of the taxpayers. I was just noting the other two. So I just wanna make sure that that was clear. Uh, so all, all I just want to point out is that we're doing that administrative uh, process, this procedure is for us to move forward as is. And just pointing out, we have close to 12,000 voters in the city of Escondido that signed this uh, petition. Uh, so um, I'm in support of it. Thank you. Voting okay. is open. Thank you. Motion approved, 5-0. Thank you again for the report. Uh, that brings us to item 14, future agenda. I have an item I'd like to request to be placed on a future agenda, and that would be to review the process by which policy is brought forth to the council. Does anybody else have anything that they want to add? Can you, can you just clarify just yeah. what that means? Oh, uh, I think there's been some questions uh, and concerns at the way policy has been brought forth. Uh, specifically out of subcommittee, so I'd like to review that process and give everybody an opportunity to give input. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. 
Uh, council member subcommittee reports and other reports. Go ahead. Just um, had the opportunity to attend the Regional Solid Waste Association um, meeting um, last Thursday. Um, very lengthy meeting, very informative meeting, and it is um, it never ceases to amaze me um, how many different rules, regulations, and uh, unfunded mandates that are forced upon us uh, through this, partici this particular um, measure. We are extremely fortunate to have EDI here with us in Escondido, and uh, I think it's uh, very valid to have ongoing updates uh, from them, as well as our staff representative uh, from RISWA as well, to keep us all informed of what's currently going on, what's coming down the pike, and um, the preparations that, that uh, we as citizens will have to be making, as well as municipalities such as the city of Escondido, as well as all of the businesses here in the, the city of Escondido. Um, we have a new uh, state senator um, who has um, vowed to implement a lot of the coastal rules and regulations statewide, and there's one measure after another, uh, one bill after another that's being presented that's going to affect um, the, the way we all do business. Um, and just a quick comment in regards to the 4th of July celebration the city, the Center for the Arts, everybody involved, police, fire, uh, work crews, everyone did a phenomenal job. It was one of the best that I can recall. Um, everyone was having a great time. Um, it was fortunately not too hot, and uh, it, it was just a great day, great evening, and just wanted to thank everyone who was involved with bringing that to fruition. Uh, we really, really do appreciate it. A uh, couple of things I'd like to uh, point out. Uh, first thing is that I had the opportunity to uh, give to Victor, or present to Victory Outreach Escondido Certificate of Recognition for Community Partnership. Uh, I did that uh, Sunday, uh, this Sunday the 7th. That was a, a very nice and beautiful opportunity to be able to do that. Uh, Fourth of July, ditto. It was a great um, opportunity for the community to come together. And I must say that I've heard wonderful things uh, from our community members that came out to see the fireworks for the first time. Uh, and then I've heard from some other ones that have seen them over the years said, hey, where were the stars and the flag and stuff? We didn't see any of that. And I said, okay, well, you know, I'll mention it, you know, so uh, I, I've, I've done that. And lastly, I just like to uh, give a shout out. Uh, Last a couple of weeks ago, my family uh, decided that they were going to take a bike ride and uh, in the heat up to Dixon Lake, and they hadn't ridden bikes up there, so it was quite a challenge to make it up there. So when they got to the gate, they uh, were greeted by our our staff uh, there, our rangers, and our ranger just did an absolute uh, incredible job uh, seeing their demeanor and saying hey you know here's some cold water you sh you know you can put it here on your body to help you cool down are you okay and i just think that uh, uh our ranger went above and beyond what her job is so i want to do this shout out to alexa rose for taking care of our community and making sure that our that our members here in escondido our residents are safe I reached out to her supervisor just to let her know. I stopped by probably within an hour, hour and a half, just to say, Alexa, you know, thank you for taking care of our people. So shout out to Alexa Rose for doing such a wonderful, wonderful job, as many of our employees here in Escondido do. You guys actually rode up from uh, from Citrus or El Norte all the way up. That's not an easy hill to ride up. Yeah, no, I, That's I didn't. Oh. <laughs> I, I didn't. I just heard about it, and then I went up in the car. That's quite challenging. It is. Awesome. Uh, okay, 
Tuesday, Monday night, I was uh, at, I spoke at a small business meet and greet with the moms of Escondido at the Cocoon Tap Room, which was phenomenal. There was 25 or 30 people there. Uh, it was neat to talk about some of the things that the city is doing in regards to business. Um, there is there is an open seat for an alternate at-large uh, commission member for LAFCO, and I had a meeting, I'm on the subcommittee to appoint that representative, and we were able to discuss the half dozen or so candidates that interviewed and narrowed it down to two. We will be interviewing them in person and then presenting them to the entire commission for appointment. Um, the Escondido Art Association had its yearly fundraising gala at the Churchill House, and that was a phenomenal event. It was great to see nearly 200 people from the arts community there, from Escondido, they're supporting uh, art and small business in the community. And the Chamber of Commerce had their installation dinner. Yeah, and I, that, was, that was one of the best events I'd ever been to. It was, it was phenomenal, it was at the Center for the Arts. And 4th of July, Man, I took the stage at 4th of July, and it was a sea of people from the stage all the way to Broadway. I don't know how many thousands of people were there, but it was an incredible event. Did a good job with the program and the fireworks. If, if you didn't go, highly recommend next year spending your 4th of July with everybody there. Uh, another phenomenal event. And that concludes my report. Deputy Mayor. All right, thank you. Yeah, I'd like to echo that. The Art Association had its, uh, its annual gala, and it was a lot of fun. Um, it was good, as the mayor was saying, to see so many people come out and support the community. Um, the installation dinner for the chamber was also great, and uh, yes, Councilman Garcia was also there, so he forgot to mention it, so I'll mention it for you. Garcia yeah, Shoe. of course. Garcia. What's that? <laughs> so, we're, yeah, Garcia Shoe. There you go. Um, <clears throat> so we had a meeting with the, uh, the Clean Energy Alliance. Uh, so the, everybody knows that the price of utilities is going up. Uh, so on the board, I suggested a way to smooth out the prices throughout the year. Um, they had given three different options. I recommended a fourth one. They looked into it and it got approved. So um, we're seeing less of a, it's going to be less drastic during certain um, high months. So um, absolutely. So um, been meeting with constituents and businesses as always. Um, happy 4th of July. As we will say it before, the 4th of July event was absolutely phenomenal. It was so great. So many people out. And also, I just want to I want to give a shout out to my colleagues, but especially the staff. Um, I had so many people come up to me just saying how impressed they are by the staff of Escondido, the police, the, the fire. I mean, I think the the mood the mood of the city is definitely different than it was a few years ago, and and I really I I think it it's it speaks volumes to our staff. So thank you so much. Um, we had our East Valley Parkway Business Association meeting today, and um, it was really informative. And for any business owners that are listening, I I would highly suggest that you go to one of our meetings. Uh, and as always, thank you to my community for the privilege of serving. No subcommittee meetings, and 4th of July week is when I take my vacation, so I had a much-deserved um, recharge and rest, which was fabulous. Um, and just a reminder that um, cooling towels, it's been really hot, and cooling towels have saved me, and so um, you can pick up your free cooling towels still available at the Education Compact Office, 220 South Escondido Boulevard. Um, and, excuse me, South Broadway, and near the library, and also um, from 8 to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday, you can just walk in and ask for your cooling towel. And I'm sure you'll see them at community events, too. Thanks, everyone. M mayor, one quick thing I forgot. Um, I'm also on the, well, the mayor was there as well. Um, President Diane Hansen's um, President's Council for Palomar, uh, Palmerado, uh, uh, Medical Systems, and one of the things that was mentioned is something that affects so many of us here in Escondido. Um, the Palomar Health Group electronic system, everything they do at a cyber attack, and they've literally been held, quote, ransom for the past uh, 10, almost 10 weeks now. It's, it's, it's horrible, it's horrendous. They have initiated a gradual process of starting to utilize um, electronic systems again there may be maybe 30 percent there they've got a long way to go and for those of you who are uh, uh, dealing with that system it's it's literally almost the the best answer is face-to-face -face 
in the physician's office or whatever you need to do to hand carry orders, prescriptions. It's, it's affected everything. The pharmacies, everyone's been affected by it. And uh, there's, there's a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel, but not a whole heck of a lot right now. So sorry to end on that note. Sir? Nothing to add. Great. Any other public comments? None. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>